As the number of electric vehicles increases, there is a need for more AV charging stations with advanced fast charging technologies. Since the vehicles have large capacity batteries, fast chargers are necessary for quick charging. In this presentation, we are looking into different power electronics topologies used to build fast AV chargers. So let's get started. There are mainly two types of charging systems, AC and DC. An AC charger powers the EV battery through the vehicle's onboard charger. A level 1 AC charger draws current in the order of 12 ampere to 16 ampere range and can take anywhere from 12 to 17 hours to fully charge a 24 kWh battery. And a level 2 AC charger draws current of anywhere between 15 ampere to 80 ampere and takes about 8 hours to completely charge a 24 kWh battery. The DC EV charging station is directly interfaced with the battery of the vehicle, bypassing the onboard charger. The DC charging station is a level 3 charger and can be used at very high power levels in the range of 120 to 240 kilowatts. This charger completely charges the battery in less than 45 minutes. Modular converters are used in these chargers, and these are kept outside the vehicle. So in the upcoming slides, we will be looking into circuit topologies used in these DC fast chargers. The power module in a DC charging station consists of AC-DC power stage and DC-DC power stage integrated into the charging station. AC-DC stage is the first level of power conversion. AC-DC stage can be single phase or three phase based on the power rating. In a single phase system, AC voltage is converted to 400 volt DC and in three phase system AC voltage is converted to 800 volt DC. AC-DC stage is also responsible for power factor correction and also need to keep the input current THD less than 5%. The DC-DC stage is the second level of power conversion. It converts the stable DC link voltage into a lower DC voltage to charge the battery. The DC-DC converter must be capable of delivering rated power to the battery over a wide voltage range and also charging the battery at constant current and at constant voltage mode depending on the state of charge of the battery. The DC-DC stage also provides the galvanic isolation between the input and output through high frequency transformer. And these converters are also capable of operating at zero voltage switching and zero current switching and hence achieving very high efficiency. Now we look into the different topologies used to realize both the AC-DC stage and DC-DC stage. Most popular topology for the AC-DC conversion in single phase application is boost PFC converter. Benefits of using this topology is that the closed loop control is very easy. But the circuit has few drawbacks. Presence of diode bridge at the input makes the circuit less efficient and it also prevents bidirectional operation of the circuit. It also has high component count compared to other topologies. So this circuit is mostly used in low power applications. If you still want to use the boost PFC converter, but for medium power applications, then interleaved boost PFC converter is a good choice. This circuit still has all the major drawbacks mentioned for boost PFC converter. To overcome the drawbacks mentioned for boost PFC, totem pole PFC converter can be used. The number of component is less for this circuit compared to boost PFC. Also, absence of the diode bridge in the circuit makes the efficiency very high. The circuit also has the bidirectional capability, which helps in vehicle to grid operation. In the high frequency leg of totem pole PFC, silicon carbide or gallium nitride devices are used. And in the low frequency leg, diodes or silicon MOSFETs are used. For three phase operation, most common topology is two level PFC converter. Two level PFC is a six switch boost type rectifier, features a very simple circuit topology and easy control. It has bidirectional power flow capability and can achieve a high power factor with reasonable efficiency. One of the drawbacks of this topology is the bulky filter inductor, which it requires to regulate the input current THD to low values. Another topology used in three-phase system is the Vienna rectifier. This topology is popular due to its operation in the continuous conduction mode, inherent three-level switching capability, and reduced voltage stress on the power devices. Only drawback of this topology is that, it doesn't have bidirectional capability. Another topology is the three-phase neutral point clamp 3-level PFC. This topology has the lowest device stress among all the three topologies. The filtering requirement is also less for this topology, so size of the inductor can be reduced, which improves the overall power density of the system. 
This topology also offers bidirectional transfer of power, and is the preferred choice for switching frequencies greater than 50 kHz because of the lesser switching losses and greater efficiency. Now we look into the DC-DC topologies, and the most common topology is the phase-shifted full-bridge DC-DC converter. Diode or MOSFET can be used in the secondary bridge. If MOSFET is used, the circuit is capable of bidirectional operation. The power transfer between the primary and secondary is controlled by varying the phase between the switch legs of the primary bridge. As a result it is possible to obtain ZBS turn on of one leg and low voltage turn on of the other leg, which reduces the losses. Another topology used in the DC-DC stage is the LLC resonant converter. The circuit is operating with variable switching frequency, and output voltage is decided by the value of tank circuit and transformer turn ratio. When the circuit is operated near to the resonant frequency, ZVS during turn on and ZCS during turn off can be achieved. And hence it has higher efficiency compared to the phase shifted full bridge converter. Drawback of the circuit is that it doesn't have bidirectional capability. Another topology is the dual active bridge. It has switches on both the primary and secondary bridge. Power flow between the input and output is controlled by adjusting the phase shift between primary bridge and the secondary bridge. Because of its inherent bidirectional capability, the circuit is more suitable for application that requires vehicle-to-grid operation. The circuit can also achieve zero voltage switching and hence high efficiency. Drawback of the circuit is that control become complex when used for wide voltage range applications. Now in order to implement the complete AV charger circuit, we can combine any of the AC-DC converter and the DC-DC converter based on the design requirement and application. In the next video, I will show you how to do the MATLAB simulation of the EV charger, by combining these converter topologies.